Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about one more method for finding maximums and minimums. But before we do that, let's review the methods you already hopefully know. Okay? So, if the problem just says find maximums and minimums of f of x, maxes or mins of whatever, f of x. Your first go-to, hopefully, is first derivative sign chart. Okay, that's what we did first, and that's what we most commonly use. That's the first derivative test. Okay, yesterday we learned the second derivative test. That's where you find your critical points the same way we did up there, but you can only use the ones where the derivative is zero. You can't use the ones where the derivative is undefined. And then... If the second derivative is easy to find, you take these critical points that you found right here, let's say x was three, okay? You take those critical points and plug them into the second derivative. And if what you get, if your second derivative at that critical point is negative, that means concave down, that means that that three that you found is a max. If it was second derivative at three is positive, that means concave up, and that means that that critical point was a min. That's called the second derivative test. So your most important method is the first one, first derivative test, first derivative sign chart. Second derivative test, pretty much use that only if the second derivative is quick and easy to find, or if I tell you that you have to. Okay, so today's method, here's what's going to change. I'm going to say find the max or min, same as always, but I'm going to say on a closed interval, maybe from zero to five, something like that. As soon as I add a closed interval to it, that changes the process again. And I won't tell you when to do it. You have to know when to do it. And this is always an AP free response question with a word problem where the closed interval is typically time, like the beginning of your day to the end of your day. Okay, so what changes if I close the, time, the interval? Okay, let me show you what that would end up doing. So typically we have a graph, let's say a graph looks like this and it has arrows and goes on forever. Well, if I ask for a max or a min for this, then you know what you're finding is basically this point and this point, right? However, if I close the interval, that gets rid of these arrows. And now my graph could end up here, in which case this would also be a max, okay? But that same graph could also end, let's see, it could also end here. And now that wouldn't be a max. Now this guy would still be my overall max, okay? So this is called the extreme value theorem, which you can call EVT, because you're basically, you have to check your extremes. You have to check your endpoints. Okay, let's look at the left side where that arrow was. That arrow wouldn't be an arrow anymore if I, if I had a closed interval. Okay, so if I have a closed interval like this, now this is a closed point. So we have to basically check, maybe this is my min, but maybe this is my min, and I have to compare. Is this critical point, which we would have found using the first derivative, is this critical point lower than this end point? So the extreme value theorem is for finding maximums and minimums on a closed interval. And what it basically says is, find your critical points like normal, meaning first derivative is zero or undefined. You can find those critical points like normal, Remember, undefined would just mean that this came to a point, sharp point. But after you find those, you have to compare these critical points to the end points as well, because the end points could end up being higher or lower than those critical points. All right, let me, let me do a better job, put that formally, and do an example. So here's the extreme value theorem. Basically, if it was the extreme value of f, we're still going to find where does f prime have critical points, zero or undefined. Okay, let's say that that 
let's say the problem said if you have a the problem is f of x is whatever that is on the closed interval from say three to seven okay you're still going to find your critical points as normal and let's say you get critical points are at four well now instead of doing a first derivative sign chart you're going to make a t chart and in that t chart you're going to put these endpoints the three and the seven and your critical points and we're going to see which of those are actually the highest or lowest. Notice you're going to be plugging into the original function because we want to know which one's actually highest. Okay? So you get your first you get your first derivative set it equal to 0 or undefined. Get your critical points, but then compare the critical points to the endpoints by plugging into the original function to figure out which one's the absolute highest and absolute lowest. Okay? Let's do a problem. Okay, in the future, anytime you see max or min, from here on out, if you see max or min and then you see a closed interval, I want you to immediately go t chart x f of x, just like before we did immediate first derivative sign chart. Okay, now we won't do a sign chart. You can, but it's just an extra step you don't need. All right, in that t chart, we're going to be putting the endpoints and any critical points we find. Now find our critical points. Get the derivative. Set it equal to 0. Factor. And we get critical points are at 0 and 2. Check to see that they're both inside of this interval. They are, so we're going to have to check them. Now what we're going to do is plug each of these values of x into the original function. Now, if this is a non-calculator problem, then you're supposed to be doing that without a calculator. Nobody's going to know if you're kind of fudging it in your homework, but you're supposed to do that without a calculator. Well, I can plug in the 0 pretty easily. If I plug in 0, I get 2. Plugging in the 2, I would get 8 minus 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2, so that's going to be negative 2. Plug in the 4, plug in the negative 0.5. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to cheat. So after you plug in all those values into the original function, not the derivative, that's why I put a title here, you now just look at these values and see which one is the absolute highest and the absolute lowest. So my maximum would occur at 4, and my maximum value is 18. Now be careful of how I phrase that. If I say what is the maximum value, you give the 18. If I say, where does it occur, you'd give the 4. So max at x equals 4, and the max value is 18, okay? Minimum is at x equals 2, and the minimum value is negative 2, okay? Now, what does this mean graphically? Just to go over that real quick, okay? These guys, if you look at this original graph, it's a cubic. So it goes like this, positive cubic. So this would be an x of 0. This is an x of 2. I don't know the y-coordinates. I don't really care. Actually, I do know the y-coordinates. They're over here. <laughs> They're in my chart. So these are my critical points. And now we got to compare. If we chop off the graph instead of those arrows, if we chop off that graph, we're basically trying to figure out are these endpoints that we have are they higher or lower than those critical points? Okay? Let's try another one. Okay, as soon as you see max or min on a closed interval, try to train yourself immediately. Closed interval means T-chart. On that T-chart, immediately put the negative 1 and the 8 so that you don't forget. Now... Find your derivative, set it equal to 0, and undefined. So I have 2 minus 3 times 2 thirds would be 2x to the negative 1 third. Okay. Set it equal to 0 and undefined. So rewrite that. I get x to the 1 third on the bottom. Get a common denominator. To 
So I have x to the one third on the bottom and on the top I have two x to the one third minus two. That's my derivative. Okay, set the numerator equal to zero and the denominator equal to zero. The denominator will be zero when x is zero. That is a critical point. And it also fits within this interval. The numerator will equal zero. Oops, I don't know why I have a negative right there. Get rid of that. Okay, the numerator will equal zero when two x to the one third minus two, when that equals zero. Add two, divide by two, we get x to the one third equals one. Cube both sides and it's when x is one. And that's also within this interval. So these are the values I need to check in my t-chart. Now, once you find your critical points where the derivative is either zero or undefined, you're now not using the derivative at all. We're plugging into the original function, don't forget. So, plugging in zero would be easy, I get zero. Plugging in one, I'd get two minus three, which is negative one. Plugging in a negative one, I would get negative two minus three times. This is the cube root, then squared, so that would be a positive. Okay, so that's going to end up giving me a negative 5. Now plugging in the 8. Okay, if I plug in the 8, 2 times 8 is 16. Minus 3 times cube root of 8, which is 2, then squared would be 4. So it's 16 minus 12, or 4. Okay, so now answer the question. My overall maximum would be here. It occurs at eight, but my maximum value is four. My overall minimum would be negative five. That's my minimum value, and it occurs at negative one. So max at eight, x equals eight. Maximum value, though, was four, okay? Minimum at x equals negative one. Minimum value, negative five. Okay, hope that you get when to do this. When do you do it again? Basically, if I ask for max or min on a closed interval, then you don't do a first derivative sign chart. You could, but it's a waste of time because you still have to check those critical points and how they compare to the end points. Okay, good luck guys. Hope you're doing well.